you've been searching for the best way to generate passive income in your life and heard that real estate is a great way to do it. But you're tired of all the so-called gurus who are all talk and no substance. Get ready to celebrate because Kevin Buck has spent 14 years successfully making it happen. This is the Real Estate Investing for Cash Flow podcast. Now, here's Kevin Buck. All right, guys, it is my honor to introduce my guest for today's show, founder and president of Eastern Union and the IRA Group, Ira Zalowitz. Ira, how are you doing today, my friend? Great. How are you? Thank you so much, Kevin. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for joining us here today. So first and foremost, for those folks that aren't familiar with you or your companies, maybe take a few minutes, uh, Ira, and give us a little bit of your background. So my background is I've pretty much been in commercial real estate finance for my whole career. I founded a company 18 years ago. I was 25 years old called Eastern Union. We are commercial mortgage brokers. We are intermediaries between borrowers and banks. Um, we lend on every asset type throughout the country. In the last three years, we closed $12 billion worth of transactions. And what makes us more unique in our space is that we're the top 10 in overall production in the country, number two in transactions, we got to our numbers by doing, on the average, the, our average loan is in the single digit millions. So although we do deals, we did one deal above 100 million, many deals in the 20, 30, 40, 50 million range, we mm-hmm. stay to our core of those small deals and keep knocking those deals out. Fantastic. Do you find that, so is that, is that your primary niche and you guys are looking to fulfill uh, that, that need that is often overpassed by some of the other brokers in your space? Is that really uh, where you no, guys have found it's not as point? much as that. It's that like, you know, people are saying one of the things is they stick to your core. Yeah. If we made our money this way, most people say, hey, isn't it more exciting and have much better sex appeal to do a $100 million deal? That's right. That people move out and they neglect where they came from. And, and we, made, we, fit, we made money in this space. Let's keep doubling down. Our clients grow. We grow with them. But we look to find clients within our space. And we're happy at any size. But we, we want to own and dominate on the 15, 20 million dollar market. Yeah, so let's talk about that primary catalyst of starting Eastern Union then. I mean, when did you identify that that was really the core and, and that, that was the competency that you, you want to run with for the long term? So, you know, like, first of all, when I started in the business, you know, to break into a business, you start breaking into a clientele, you cold call. And as you cold call people, you pick up deals. The first People are giving us deals were obviously the smaller deals. That's they started with the smaller, tougher deals. We realized as we're becoming successful, we found an easy way of doing these deals. Then we realized that we were breaking into more clients. And I said, I don't understand. You've been in business for 20 years. What happened to your broker? Ah, he doesn't focus on these small deals. So he said, hey, let me keep doubling down. So we created our pitch around calling owners and said, can we start with your quote unquote smaller deal? Over time, we grew to all the deals, but we, we, don't, we don't forget our roots. And we started this way. We found this niche and we doubled down in that area. I love it. I love everything about it. Willing to do what others aren't. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting. We go through the same challenges ourselves in the, in the niche that we're in here in commercial side of things is that there's a number of brokers that we really like that we've done a lot of business with, but ultimately there's a certain threshold where, you know, we can't rely on them to do some of the smaller deals, smaller transaction sizes. And we've got kind of our go-to that is getting a lot of our business now because we've uh, somewhat been ignored or neglected uh, by some of the folks we had prior relationships with uh, that weren't willing to do those smaller deals or didn't really put an emphasis on that that side of the business. And so that's interesting. And um, I, I love that you guys are just willing to hustle and, and get it done and ultimately have created some very long-term clients because of it and uh, have grown a very successful practice. So kudos to you. And I want to talk about you know, Eastern Union. So that's kind of the background there, but there's a new venture that you've recently started called the IRA Group. And so um, I'd love to hear from your perspective, uh, you know, what the IRA Group is and also the reasons for, uh, for creating it, if you could. So the IRA Group is basically those two things. It, 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 focuses on the, it focuses on brokering of loan participations. So as Eastern Union is a broker, we'll typically work on a full transaction. Someone's looking to borrow $5 million, $3 million, $100 million. We'll find them a lender for that source. Through the IRA Group, it's when a lender is looking for participation in their loans, primarily bridge loans, where they're, where they're doing these loans, on, whether it's on a fix, from a fix and flip, just for fifty dollars to $100,000, all the way up to in the tens of millions of dollars, a bridge loan. What happens if someone has an extra million dollars, or as small as $25,000, and they say, hey, I'd like to participate in those loans. We're brokering the loan participation. So we went in, that's the first focus, is, loan, is brokering of participation. And it's also educating people in general to, there's an, an alternative way to make money within commercial real estate space. It's not just by buying, it's by lending. 
And lending has its benefits. You can be a first position mortgage, number one. And the second benefit is you can pick your level of risk. So unlike when you buy real estate, a million dollar purchase price, either I, I think it's worth a million or it's not, and I make a mistake, I have no margin to error, I can decide, hey, real estate's cooling down. I don't, I don't want to be in that price at a million. I'm comfortable that to lend you just 800000 So you can be in a loan at the level of risk you want to be. I'm a little more conservative, I'll lend you 700000 So you could pick your level of risk. Ultimately, my goal is to help the, the lenders that are making loans be able to get cheaper sources of money by, by, by brokering the equivalent of like crowdfunding, brokering of loan participations throughout the country. Um, so this way they could trickle down to borrowers to pay less on bridge. On the other side, find people that are very conservative, money in the bank, scare when they listen to your show and they hear about these investments. Hey, it sounds great, but they only focus on the risk. So what are you nervous about? It might go down. So lend and get people that have money in the bank at one, two percent to say, hey, why don't they get comfortable lending at 50% loan to value, 60%, mm -hmm. 70, move their way up until they go over the line to go for equity. Very interesting. So let's talk about the, the actual profile that you're looking for. Who's the ideal investor? Is there minimums? Uh, do they have to be accredited? Um, you know, what type of returns uh, uh, might your investors be seeking? So the, first of all, I the terminology of the changes to the loan participants, the not investors Because okay. once you the investor space, it's a security issue. Um, uh, and that's where um, you talk about accredited investors and not. When it's loan participation, when lenders, people that are in the business of making loans, join together with others that want to make lo making loans. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not a securities lawyer, so you know, I want to give that disclaimer, but from our understanding, and that's what the business we're in, is le loan participation does not need security. So therefore, those normal questions don't apply. So what does apply is just a matter of convenience. Do I want to deal, if I'm doing a, a million dollar loan, do I want to take thousand dollar checks, put them together? So that's, that's the question. So really, I, well, as a broker, we drew a line at $25,000. We said, if you are willing to put as little as $25,000 per loan and several times a year, you're somebody that is an actually an actual lender it's, and, and from our understanding of the law, and I could bring you in and, and bring you into lenders and make that participation and make the, bro the brokerage together. We are not taking money from anybody. So I'm purely acting as Eastman as a broker for whole loans, is a broker Got for it. participations. Unlike most of these platforms, they to themselves, they raise money for their own groups. So all these questions, you only take money at what level? I'm gonna bring people that wanna participate into loans and bring them to crowdfunding platforms or to individual lenders, and private lenders throughout the country. Got it, got it. Now that makes sense. You mentioned, you know, first lien position. I mean, are, I'm assuming you're making, uh, you, you're basically you guys are facil helping facilitate the, the, the variety of different types of loans out there, whether it be first lien position, second lien, bridge, mez. I mean, depending on the risk profile of the loan participants is uh, ultimately uh, whatever type of loan they might end up in. Is that correct? Correct. So, but a good point you bring up here is an Eastern Union. We do every. We go from zero percent to one hundred percent full capital stack. Okay. For, for the IRA group, we are not focusing on 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 brokering um, any participation in anything but that first position slot. Because from a reputation risk that I, I built a career up and and I we always stay sterling and and, and 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 totally clean. I don't want to run to an issue reputation issue. The deals that go sour first are the higher the capital stack. I don't want to run into an issue. I meet someone and say, hey, why don't, you, why don't you think about lending? It's safer in their mind. And then they, they lost money. Oh, I trusted you. They, even though I'm not legally bound to it, my reputation is, I think if someone's going into the lending space because they're more conservative, they should stop at a first position. Within the first position, do an A piece or a B piece, structure differently potentially for your risk. But mezzanine is not something I tell an individual investor $100,000 to participate in MEZ for his first loan. Sure, if, sure. That's my uh, humble opinion. So the IRA group has been around now for a number of months. Um, you're, you're fairly recently founded. Give me an example. I mean, ha have you guys actually uh, placed a loan yet? I mean, have you had you know, right. finalized the compilation of loan participants and actually created yeah, so, a loan at this so point? We actually, so thing, we actually did several loans over the, over the last few years. As, as Eastern Union, we did 20% of our business last year. We closed last year in 2018. We closed $5 billion of transactions. A billion was bridge and hard money loans. Within those loans, we actually also brought participants to the lenders. So it, the, the only thing that really changed in the IRA group is we formally opened up a new entity that's a standalone entity that's going to focus on this. So right now we're in the process of building up new participants throughout the country that are looking to participate, and we'll send them opportunities that match at that time for them. So we were successful already post-launch and pre-launch because the only thing we're doing differently is making it to a formal entity to have a vehicle. If someone calls, I have 50,000, what can I do? I have a place for them to say, oh, 
go to the IR group, fill out the form, and if we have something for you that matches, we'll send it your way. So hmm. this is deals transactions do all day long. So I know this isn't a security. These are loan participants, but uh, you mentioned the 25,000 minimum. Are there any other um, you know, specifications that that, that that loan participant has to fall within to qualify other than just having available capital? Sure. So the, the $25,000 number, by the way, is only my number personally. The reason why I have a number of 25,000 is because the, the way the market is, is, is moving, and I'm sure you see with digital and technology, is that there are more alternate lenders in the marketplace. And the reason for that is that, that, that it's much easier because of technology to be able to take money from the crowd and, and pull things together. You don't care if you have a thousand investors, they'll fill out a form. On the other hand, the, the actual lenders today aren't tech savvy. So I'm actually going to an old school lender who knows his local market and says, hey, I'm lending out a million dollars. He just doesn't want to deal with thousand dollar checks. So even though I tell him, what's the difference? I'll bring people together. They'll sign digital papers for you. What's the, uh, he has his minimum. No one's willing to really go below 25,000 period. Most mm-hmm. of them on the larger deals when I go to 50,000, 100. So the number is really because who, who am I bringing to? My dream is to have like, you know, Amazon, fulfillment by Amazon. If I can have some sort of technology like on the IRA group, like, fulfillment something service that I could tell the, the, the borrower, the lender, say, listen, I pulled together a million dollars for you. Why do you care? I'm handing on a silver platter. They're ready. The money's ACH. We're not there yet. So right now I'm going old school using technology to segue into the old school. So that's the future. That's where you want to go though. That's the vision. The, the future company. is, I don't think, I don't want to be as bold as the end of it, but the future is banking. Banking is that banks having a tough time. They're getting the money from yeah. the depositors. Why should you deposit there? And I think eventually we're going to put up a loan, a regular conventional loan. So I'm going to say, hey, I'm doing a loan, a five-year multifamily deal, 4%. Do you want to lock up your money on a 4% deal down the block from you? Would you rather keep it in the bank at two on a CD? So I think the whole banking is going to change. So now I'm finding hard money and I'm watching it go down. From an educational perspective, uh, what have you found to be some of the biggest roadblocks of, of educating folks on this type of investing versus uh, from an equity perspective, whether they're passive or active in a, in a real estate endeavor? Uh, what have you found to be the biggest roadblocks? The, the biggest roadblock on debt is that once they finally get comfortable, they realize, hey, it's uh, the, high, it's the, high, it's, 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 the tax is very high. There's no, no sheltering on a, on a regular loan. And number two, the most I can make is, it's like, this is the coupon. If it's at yeah. 8%, 9%, 10%, that's the number. You're not making more than that. That, bought, that they realize they have an issue with it. But then when you flip the coin to them and say, so why don't you go and buy? Don't be part of the first 80%. Go to the top 20. You can make 12, 14, 18, 20. But what happens if there's a, oh, I'm sorry, then you lose your money. I don't forget out. So they're stuck <laughs> in a bind. So that's why when I, when I was really excited about that, what changed in my career was the eye opener after being this for 22 years was when I realized that, that what used to be only available to the largest of investors um, to, to take $100 million worth of loans or a billion dollars and tranche it out and break it up into the riskier piece, the less riskier piece, is now available on a deal-by-deal basis in what's called an A piece and a B piece. So now I can meet that person and say, listen here, your money's in the bank. So your money's at 2%. Let's go slow. Why don't you go to someone doing a loan? It's an $800,000 loan. Take the, from the first 500000 the 50% loan-to-value piece, and only make 6%. Only make 4%. Take much better than the bank, and then get your feet wet and walk from that point on. But the hurdle on each side is, one, if you focus on the loss of money, equity is tough for you. You focus on it's all I'm going to make on the debt side, and you don't go there. So mm-hmm. people are stuck in the middle. So that's really getting it to people getting out in, in their comfort zone, getting out of their comfort zone to a new comfort zone. And that's really the hope is that they get into real estate through lending. Got it. Got it. Does the IRA group or a subsidiary of the IRA group uh, co-invest as a loan participant uh, along these different uh, uh, loan products that are made? Okay. So on purpose, I will never disclose at this point, not to you, I'm saying in general, yeah. if I'm investing in a loan or not. And the main reason is because I don't want anybody to be making their participation decision based on, oh, if IRA sent it out, did this much business, his name is clean, he must only, so I want someone to make their own independent underwriting decisions. If mm-hmm. I end up investing with someone, then I'm going to say, or loan participant with someone, and end up doing it, my intention is to say, I'm doing it, do you want to join me in my group? But I don't Got plan it. to like, tell people like a way of like getting in and like dangling that carrot. That's uh, right. you know, I want to keep a Chinese wall in that, uh, in that area. Then. I understood, understood. As far as our listeners are concerned, Ira, what else do they need to know? Now, I mean, the, the, the typical listener to our show, very familiar with syndicated uh, equity investments. I mean, that, that we talk about that 
you know, week in, week out, right? What else do they need to know about this, about the debt side of things as far as making a consideration of this, you know, adding this possibly to their, their portfolio of investments? Is there any other uh, particular piece of this that they need to be aware of? So it's not so much that they have to be aware of, it's the same, you know, it's, it's yeah. whatever protection they use to themselves to equity, it's, the, it's, the, it's all the more so by debt, but they're in a better, they're in, they're in a safer position on the, on the debt side of things. I just, when I meet people that are in equity, I tell them the benefit for debt, if you don't bridge debt. So I'm not talking about four, five, six percent rates. I'm talking a fix and flip. Someone's buying a build a, a house and he's going to fix it up. And, and a few months later, he's going to move on. He's paying 10, 12 percent, 14 percent. I'm talking about someone buying an office building for 30 million dollars and he's renovating it. Right now, there's no cash flow. So he has to take a bridge loan, participating in those loans. So my advice really is to people that, that they should consider lending. It's really for two reasons to consider lending. One is these are short-term loans. So while you diversify your portfolio, while you're waiting for that next equity deal to come through, or if you have a certain amount of money you might need in a year from now or 18 months from now, you might want to diversify, diversify and or have short-term investments. But I also tell people is that the best deal you should probably start with, if you're about to invest in equity in the deal, you start getting a little bit too nervous, it might be overpriced. Maybe mm -hmm. consider on that same deal going on the debt side of that deal. Yeah. That's the example. So the IRA group, I lose out a lot. I just had a transaction where I educated someone on this process, like I'm talking to you now. And, you know, the person calls me back the next day and says, I wanted to thank you very much. Because of your idea to structure this eight concept and a safer piece, I found a local lender in my neighborhood. I went over to him. I structured the deal a certain way. I'm in with him. So I didn't make a commission, but, you know, that's the, you know, what goes around comes around. At a certain point, I'm sure I'll get a deal from it. But I think the education process, people really don't realize it's a solid alternative. More importantly, I'll tell, say, is that someone that's going into the real estate space, they say, help me start by syndicating real estate purchases. They might want to consider syndicating real estate loans. It's an mm -hmm. easier barrier to break into than it is on, on, on the real estate front. Yeah, yeah, very, very interesting. So just to clarify, uh, the typical types of loans that we're talking about here are bridge loans, short-term loans. What, what is the average uh, time span of, uh, of one of these bridge loans, whether it be single family flip or a, um, a bridge product that's associated with an office, retail, what have you, a commercial type of project? What is the typical time frame? I would frame? say 12 to 18 is the typical. Okay. Then there's sometimes things that are very short down to six months and as long as two to three years. And my, I advise people, if you're going into this space, bridge space, you really want to try to only do it, and you're more of a novice, you want to only try to do deals that are t our initial term are officially only 12 months. Because if you're going into a deal, someone's paying 12%, how can someone buy a deal and know now what's going to be three years on a speculative deal carrying a 12% current? So that's why I tell people, if you're doing a bridge loan and the, digit, the interest rate is double digits, it doesn't mean it's a bad deal. But you, you want to do those deals typically if you're new at 12 or a year or less. If you're very sophisticated and you understand why, you know, some people call expensive, some people call hard money rates, they call them more bridge rates, they call them cheap equity. Yeah. So I would just advise someone's getting to dabbling in the space, try to do things that it's not longer than 12 months because you could typically have a horizon what's going to be in the next 12 months. You can pretty much get comfortable. As far as from the uh, loan participants' perspective, uh, how much do we get to understand and know about the actual borrower and, or the sponsor, wh whatever you want to call that individual? Okay, I so, mean, so in my case, full disclosure, the way I'm setting it up, I hate these ideas, these blind funds or these groups. That's where all the money, stop losing money. What my, the way the IRA group is going to be set up is that you'll be sent a deal when you, if you're interested in, the, in participating, you'll be put directly in touch with the borrower. So I'm putting myself in a vulnerable situation that I might not get my commission from the lender that I'm supposed to get if they do a side deal. But at the end of the day, I care more about the reputation and the person not losing money. And mm -hmm. I feel if I'm going to be honest with them, they'll be honest with me and I won't get taken advantage of. But my intention is you should not invest in a deal unless you understand the deal, where you're at, and drive by it, look at it. That's why people could choose. I'm, I'm building a database throughout the country. I plan on having a few hundred thousand investors over the next couple of years so that any type of loan structure or any type of risk tolerance or any market or any sub product is somebody there for that product. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now that, that's fantastic. So you guys kind of take yourselves out of that equation, let the loan participants speak directly with the, the borrower and let them dig into the, the, you know, the, the business model of the actual, the borrower, the entity, the deal itself, the market that it's in. Um, they're directly, uh, uh, you know, connected to that individual. Is Correct. that right? So, okay. okay. Correct. So I, I, just to go back, when we got this on, on the Eastern Union front, 
is where that certain banks don't like dealing with brokers. Mm-hmm. Whatever the reason is. I mean, the number one reason is it's higher because you're involved. You know what's in the market. You cause me to lower my rate, so they don't want me in the middle. They want me to bring them deal flow. But I do the same thing. I tell the banker, listen here, it's your credit. You're making a decision. You should know the borrower direct. I'll never stand in the way. Build a relationship direct with the borrower. Mm-hmm. I'll protect my credit. My credit's the fee. Don't look to cut me out. I'll protect you. You protect me. Yep. So I took the same thing down to that $100,000 participation. Got it. Got it. So you've been at this overall with Eastern Funding, with the IRA Group. You've been at this for, for many, many years now. Going back in time, if you could jump into a time machine, IRA, what advice would you give yourself back when you were, you, I think you said 25, when you first started Eastern Funding? What advice would you give yourself? So the advice I'd give is that, um, and I keep doubling back to it, is that you stay to your core mm-hmm. and stay to your core. And a lot of times as you start becoming more successful in different areas, people say, oh, you're already here. You know what other people are doing? And then like before you know it, you're grabbing a lot of different things. Before you know it, that's when the times I, I, went, I looked at the dip is because I try to be in too many places at one time. Mm-hmm. I want to give an interesting tidbit that people can relate to. They have this, uh, you know, you go a new bank open sometimes. They have this machine with dollar bills flying in. You go into a room for 30 seconds and it, it, as many dollar bills you can pull out while it's flying, you get it. And most people walk in and say, this is crazy. I'll get 30 of them. They walk out with one. And the person that I read from someone who says the trick to do that room is you got to walk into the room. You got to stay focused on one dollar bill and grab it. And the next one. And you, cause sometimes you go in to grab it. Another one comes close. You pull it in. Stay yeah. focused, stay your core and you know, stay with your core. And I tell the same thing to people, you know what you're good at. You're a salesman. Don't try if you're a salesman to become a great organized person. Partner up. I say double your, you know, don't know your weaknesses, double down on your strengths and partner up to neutralize it. So if I'm a great, if I'm a great communicator, not great details, let me partner up with an amazing detail person. So together yeah. we want to enter it. Yeah, absolutely. The, the shiny object syndrome, avoid it at all costs, right? It's funny. Someone actually used that example about the, the room with the money flying around a couple of years ago. And uh, uh, their take on it was, is that the solution to, to walk out of there with the most money possible, Ira, was to Within five seconds, you know, do a lot of practice before you go in there, but within five seconds, take off your shirt, tie a knot into the top of it, and then use that as a, as a big basket and uh, f- focusing on uh, scooping them up like a net versus uh, trying to pick them up one by one. So I thought yeah. that was uh, kind well, of... You know, so, but I, I in my <laughs> business, I said, don't cut corners, you know, stay straight. Yeah. Long term, it comes back around. You know? Yeah, fair enough. Well, well good deal. This, this has been absolutely phenomenal. Really appreciate you coming on the show, Ira. And, uh, you know, lots of golden nuggets that you shared with us here today. And, um, if I could ask you before we say goodbye to one another, if there was one final golden nugget of advice or wisdom that you could leave with our listeners today that may inspire and motivate them as they progress in their real estate investing career, what would that one last golden nugget be? It's, it's a little bit of what I just, it's a little bit of what I just said. The one line is that know your strengths, know your weaknesses. Don't, you know, don't try to fix your weaknesses, polish your strengths. Got and, it. And, and partner up with people if that weakness is for your strengths. And that's, you know, as someone said a line, partners are for dancing. You know, they use the line that partners are for dancing. But in real estate, almost every successful real estate deal person has a partner with them that typically yeah. is not similar to themselves. They have the same value system, but at the core, they, they have different core competencies and together they can accomplish it. So as far as the, the IRA group or Eastern funding, um, how do you label yourself? Which of those individuals are you? And then do you have a, a partner or a, a senior level executive that offers those different compliments that you might not have? Okay, so that's a great point. So um, again, it's everything also, you know, I just want to clarify this point. It's not like it's, it's to each person compared to where they're, where they're the best at. So on a scale of one to 10, what are you a 10 at or 12 at? And which mm-hmm. item on that list it compared to your 10 is lower. So I am, I, I the, the part that I, I prefer not to have deal with in the business is getting involved in, those, in the details, in the, in the, in the follow through details and the galleries of it. So I went, when I opened up a business, I opened up Abraham Bergman till today with partners, never had an argument, never had a fight. And his focus is on like when I bring up the, opening up the higher group, he did all the research on the legal and said, okay, I already has a story. This is the box you could live in. You can't go here. You can't go here. You could go here, but not. And then living on that box. And once I get accounts, then similarly, he would like be able to process or to process the loans to work to work to work that side of the business. And as I grew over the years, I found people within the organization that had different, better skill sets. And eventually, today, 
I believe we have one team where if you take all the skills that a person needs to be successful and you break it down, I have the expert. I built around my, we live in a gig economy today where you need an Uber driver just right now pay for the driver. You need someone to do artwork. You go online, you get pieces what you need. I believe today we assembled the biggest group of experts in every one segment. So the unit. So you pull one person out individually, they're not perfect. But within right. the team concept, as a firm, there's no transaction we cannot place and do anywhere in the country. And it's as a unit to be able to pull this all together. Got it. Got it. Absolutely love it. Ira, this has been a lot of fun. And folks, if you want to learn more about Ira and uh, the Ira Group or Eastern Funding, you can visit him at the iragroup.com. Uh, or Ira, if you wouldn't mind sharing uh, Eastern Funding as well for those folks that might be looking for. Easternunion.com. Uh, Eastern we finally, after eight, 17 years, bought our full name. It used to be Eastern with letters afterward. We uh, negotiated to buy it. So it's Easternunion.com. We got the name. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Ira. And thank you guys again for tuning into this week's show. Until we meet again next week, this is your host, Kevin Bupp, wishing you huge success.